Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're editing a photo of a landscape image. Now, this isn't one of my greatest shots and probably will never go into my portfolio, but I still wanted to share it with you all. Now, with On One Photo Raw 2025 being announced and on its way out at some point in the future, you may want to upgrade or you may want to purchase On One Photo Raw 2025. If that is the case, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. It'll save you some money, and I do make a small commission at no extra cost to you. And it's a great way to support this channel and keep content coming your way. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the edit, which I think is going to be pretty straightforward. I hope it is. Let's go. First thing I'm going to do is select Brilliance AI, and you already know I have this tune. If you haven't checked that, then check the description box below. You can see how I tuned my Brilliance AI. So that way you can try the same and see if it works for your photos. Uh, this is kind of working. Let's go before, after, before, after. I like what it's doing in the foreground here. I'm not sure it's giving me the look I really care for in the sky, but that's okay. I like that it's a subtle adjustment. It's not over the top. Now, one of the things that I like to do with my landscape images is check out ca uh, camera profiles. So I'm just going to go through a few of these and see if any of them make the image look a little bit better. And I have a slight idea of where I want to go with this image, but I'm not entirely sure. And honestly, I think on one standard is probably the best place maybe we'll open up some shadows but i think we'll do that selectively so i'm not going to uh, get too crazy with anything else in here so let's just go ahead and minimize that and hop over to the local tab now we'll add an adjustment and i did say that i want to open up some shadows so we will hit the shadow slider here and what I'm going to do is throw a linear gradient right over the bottom here. So I'm going to hit the letter M on the keyboard to get my masking bug. And it's already set to linear top. So I'm just going to click right down here. And that's going to apply the mask. If I hit the letter O, you can see what it's doing. It's applying it down here at the bottom and then starting to fade away here. And I am going to place this right here for now. So I realize I shot this very crooked. If you look at the horizon, it kind of goes down like that. And that's no good. So let's go ahead and hit the C key. Let's get our crop tool. And I'm going to grab my level tool. And I'm going to try and level this out as much as I can. So in theory, the foundation of these homes should be pretty level with each other. And I'm just going to get like a majority of the homes uh, to be level. Let's go something like that. And I'm not sure that looks the best. Let me hit return just to look at it without the crop lines. Yeah, that looks a little off. So let's go back over here and let's try this again. So we'll try to level it maybe, maybe like that. Yeah, there we go. Because if I remember correctly, this was kind of at a canted like hill looking thing or type of thing. And I don't know if I want more water to the left with less cars and stuff like that. I think I'll, I'll go the other way. I think I will go. I want to see the edge of this like ridge over here. So we'll do something like that and maybe like so. So I'm not going to uh, go crazy again. Not a landscape photographer. I probably just like put my camera on a tripod and press the shutter button uh, because I shot this at one third of shutter speed at F20. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what I was doing. Uh, but that is just the life of learning photography. Let me know in the comment section if you ever did something when you look back at the camera settings and you're like, what was I doing? 
but I digress from that and back to the edit. So, so far what I've done is I've opened up the shadow in this lower area using that gradier, gradial, wow, gradient tool, not a gradial filter. I can't speak today. So we'll just go ahead and rename this shadow open or yeah, sure. Why not? Now let's add another radial filter or uh, gradient filter, I'm sorry, over the top of the sky to kind of darken it down. This is a very common move. I'm gonna just change this to linear bottom, click about here. And this is a, like I said, it's a very common move uh, in landscape photography, but that's probably a little too aggressive of some exposure. So I went ahead and lowered that. And then we'll add in some saturation and I want more blue tint in the top half of the sky. Uh, and now that I modified the color, I think it can stand to be just a little bit darker, which I think that that works out quite well right there. So now it's time to move into adding more color into this area, into this area. How do we add more color into the photo? Well, we're going to add another adjustment and this time we are going to click edges. I'm just going to click right here in the photo. It's going to put the negative exposure, but that's not what I want. Instead, what I want is actually a positive exposure because I want the colors to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to pull up on the vibrance and even the saturation. And then I'm just going to make this narrow and shorten it up a little bit and just put it like right above the, uh, the horizon line there. And if I turn this off and on, it's probably going to be pretty subtle. Hopefully it comes through on the YouTube compression, but you can see it's just adding like a patch of vibrancy and color into that area. I really, really enjoy doing this to my images. Uh, and then I'm also going to add in some warmth. So pulling up on the temperature and you can see that kind of changes the overall vibe of the photo, because if I turn off the adjustments and turn it back on, you can see we're really starting to get some shape going here. It's not perfect. I don't think it's going to become perfect, but we're going to get it as close to something like perfect. All right. So that is that adjustment. We got three of them so far. I think I'm going to add an additional one. And this one's going to be just for the sky. So the way that I'm going to do that, I'm just going to come. Let me see. Is it in here? Yep. I can right click on the mask and then I can click mask sky. So what it's going to do is add in this particular adjustment to the foreground and not the sky. And then I'm just going to invert it and we're going to make this make sense here in a little bit but on one has to think itself through. It's got to figure out what's, what is the sky and what is not the sky. Okay. So like I said, it was going to apply the adjustment to the foreground instead of the sky. Uh, that's just how it works, but I think we got a pretty good mask there. So I'm thankful for that. Let's just go ahead and right click on it, invert it. And then I don't want to do a negative exposure. Instead, what I want to do is a vibrance and a saturation adjustment. And you can see that it's just starting to pull that color out in the sky. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pull to the blue just a little bit here and maybe pull over to the right to pull out some of those magentas in the sky because I feel like it should be cool but more magenta and I may even add some more vibrance. I don't want to make it like too like potently saturated. That's the way of saying that. I don't know. Uh, and I may even actually brighten it up just a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks pretty decent. So if I turn it off, and turn it back on. You can just see that I brought out a little bit of the color in the sky. Maybe we'll blend it with some of the natural sky so that way 
it goes quite well with everything. Um, yeah. And just to make sure, I'm not seeing this happen, but just to make sure that it's only modifying the color, I'm going to come down to the color option uh, for blending and just blend the color into the image. So here's what we had starting out. It was actually a pretty dull sky and dark foreground. Uh, and then this is what we have so far in the overall image. Now, I haven't even touched effects yet. And landscape images with on one, there are so many effects that you can apply. So I'm going to only kind of go through a few of these that you could apply. I mean, honestly, you could apply all of them and you'll probably be fine. But the first one that I'm going to go with is a LUT. And I know I just did all that modification for color to come and revisit or overlay more color here. Uh, but what I want to do is only modify the color, not the contrast. So I'm going to make sure that I have my LUT selected, come up to blending, just like we did with the uh, local adjustment. And I'm going to come down to color. So this is only going to color in our image. And now we'll go ahead and collapse that. And now what I can do is come over to some of my uh, LUT packs. And I am using personal LUT packs here. You can find these all over the internet. Uh, a lot of these actually came from on one uh, as a part of the plus membership. So again, if you want to join anything over at on one, consider using the coupon code free will photos 20. So that way you can save some money and you would have access to downloading these as well in the event that you say, Hmm, I want some of those. So I'm going to select the summertime one and I'm just going to kind of filter through the summertime LUTs here and see which ones I actually like number four. And I'm looking for something that matches with what was already there and just kind of accents it. Uh, and I think number four was the winner. So we're going to go with number four, but it's obviously way too strong. So what I like to do with my LUT is pull down on the opacity we're about 50% here. Let's turn it off and turn it back on. And you can see it really just complements what's happening. Uh, because I made the sky a little bit more blue earlier, I feel like maybe I should pull this down because I do want that blue sky to kind of shine through. And this LUT has that magenta push uh, in the sky. So a LUT is a great place to start when you work with landscape images. Now, Another one is a classic dynamic contrast, all right? Uh, like I told you, I wanted the color to modify just the color. Um, and with the contrast, I wanted to modify just the contrast. Well, contrast is really just luminance values. So we're going to come over to blending, click on luminosity. And now as I make adjustments to the uh, dynamic contrast, it is not going to impact anywhere else. But right now I'm putting the dynamic contrast into the sky and we don't need it there. So what I'm going to do is right click and I'm just going to click on mask sky. I probably should have just copied the mask, but hopefully this one will speed along since it's already created a mask for the sky in previous, uh, filters. But if not, we'll be patient. Okay, so that definitely took way longer than I had hoped for it to, but that is what it is. Uh, if I hit the letter O, you can see where it has applied the dynamic contrast, which is where I wanted it to go in the first place. So I'm going to hit the letter O and we're going to let that be. But I don't want like a whole bunch of contrast in the image, so I'm just going to pull this down. It's probably not coming through on the... Uh, YouTube compression, but just know that it is applying the contrast just enough to give definition to the overall image. Now, what I would like to do is work on some of the light, right? The way that we're doing this, if you're not uh, following along, we have a LUT that's going to work on the color. We have dynamic contrast 
that's going to work on the tonal range overall. And now I want to work on the quality of the light in the image to make it make sense for a sunset photo. Well, I'm going to go ahead and add in the sunshine filter. This is one of those filters that it just adds a character to an image. And I don't want it to be really strong, so I'm going to pull it down a little bit. And then I'll just pull up on the warmth and maybe even saturate it a little bit more. Now, this is crazy. It's going all over the place. It doesn't look the way that I would personally like it to. So what I'm going to do is hit the letter M on the keyboard. I'm going to get my radio filter or yeah, we'll go with edges. And then I'm just going to click right over here where we put that color uh, saturation earlier and I'll make it narrow. And then I'm just going to fade this in just a little bit. Uh, now I think it could stand to get a little bit brighter. So it's like it's getting brighter in just that area. And the sunshine filter is just impacting that left side. So if I turn it off and turn it back on, you can see how it just kind of gives it an uplift, right? Well, to really accentuate that, what we're going to do is add in a tone enhancer. And then I'm going to pull down on the exposure, uh, probably to about here. I think that that looks good. And then of course, I'm going to grab my masking bug and I'm going to click right here. Actually, I'm going to change this to center and then I'm going to click right here. And what that's going to do is give me this vignette look. And I'm going to make this more narrow and then, uh oh, I did not mean to add an additional. We're going to go ahead and pull this out and maybe even make it more narrow. And I think that that brings us to a more interesting image. So here's what we started with. And here is what we ended with. Now, again, you can go in so many directions with Home on Photo Raw. So if you want to figure out how to go into a direction that's specific for the needs of your photography, consider signing up for a one-on-one -on -one coaching lesson with me. You can do so by checking out the link in the description box below. I'll answer as many of your questions as I possibly can during the session, as well as giving you a workflow template that you can apply to your images. So when you sit down, you don't have to uh, be an expert of the software, but you can get your images out and into the world a little bit faster because you have a streamlined workflow for your photography. So if that's something you're interested in, then go ahead, use that link down below. If you want to see more content that's centered around online photo raw, click the playlist that's on the screen now. And until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating peace.